Hi, Stitchy people. Um, so this is Jesse at Mislaid Pages, and this is either going to be a special short video or it's going to be embedded in my next floss tube. Um, just depends on how much time I have this weekend. But um, I needed to go ahead and film this. It's Friday night currently, February 28th, um, because the thing that I want to show you, I'm actually going to be giving away this weekend, and I kind of have a spiffy story that it, to go with it, um, just for the inspiration. Sorry, I'm I'm shaking the camera because I'm excited. I'm shaking the whole table. So anyway, um, one of the things that I have done since my last floss tube um, is I actually have created my own, um, I, I designed my own pattern. That's the word I want. <laughs> it's Friday. It's been a long week. My brain is mostly fried. Um, but anyway, so I designed my own pattern this week um, because this weekend, tomorrow, I am going to GalaxyCon in Richmond. And um, at GalaxyCon will be Will Wheaton. Now, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Will Wheaton or are fans. I am a huge fan of Will Wheaton and I have been since um, since Stand By Me back in the 80s um, and Tin Soldiers and then um, Star Trek The Next Generation. In fact, Will Wheaton is the reason that I watched Star Trek The Next Generation when it came on in like 1989 because I was like, oh my god, it's Will Wheaton! I have to watch that show because Will Wheaton is in it! Um, and then I fell in love with it. Um, my family got me into fantasy and sci-fi when I was young, um, but folks like Will Wheaton kept me involved in sci-fi, kept me interested in sci-fi, um, and as a result of joining into Star Trek, because Will Wheaton was watching it, I fell in love with the show, um, and Picard is my favorite captain. Um, I think he's the best captain. We can agree to disagree if you like, um, but Picard will forever and always be my favorite Star Trek captain. Um, I haven't watched the new show yet. If you have watched it, let me know what you think, because um, I have... I, I have this thing about paying for CBS. It's a network channel. I shouldn't have to pay for a network channel to be able to watch shows. But I really, really love Patrick Stewart and I really, really love Picard. So I'm going to have to watch it. Um, I need you all to tell me, if any of you have watched it, how dire it is that I go ahead and pay for a subscription now. So anyway, anyway, digression. The point is, uh, I've been a huge fan of Will Wheaton since back in the day became even more of a fan of Will Wheaton once he started blogging and writing books and uh, doing tabletop, which if you haven't watched it, I don't know how you haven't watched it, um, but it's a, it started out as a YouTube uh, video or YouTube show that uh, where he would bring on friends of his, um, sometimes other celebrities, sometimes just family members, folks that he knew. He would bring them on, teach them how to play a new game, to feature that game and to kind of let people see how how the rules worked and how the game played and all that sort of stuff just to get people more into tabletop gaming and gaming in general um, and so I've actually had the opportunity to meet him a couple of times because he's gone to Gen Con in the past um, Gen Con is the biggest four days in gaming um, how they build themselves <laughs> um, it's been uh, it's been held in Indianapolis for the last several years um, and I actually one year um, got to meet and play games with Will Wheaton because he did a Kickstarter for Tabletop to fund uh, the role-playing game season that he did, uh, a special short season um, ba based off of the game or featuring the game Titan's Grave, which is a role-playing system. Um, and so if you backed that at a certain level, then you were invited to play games with Will Wheaton at Gen Con. And I happened to be in a position that year to be able to put that kind of funding towards it, and it was one of the most awesome things ever. <laughs> so anyway, like I said, I'm a huge, huge Will Wheaton fan, a huge geek uh, for Will Wheaton, and he's going to be there this weekend. And so that's sort of the background. Now what happened recently that made me decide I needed to do a cross stitch for Will Wheaton? I always have wanted to give some of my favorite actors something. Um, like I had in the past, I thought Felicia Day might be there this weekend when they started talking about GalaxyCon coming up because she was here for the last one. And so I had thought, oh, I'll make a baby blanket for her little girl but she's not going to be here. Um, and they announced that ages ago that she, or they announced that Will Wheaton was going to be here, but she wasn't on the billing. So I scrapped that idea. But when I found out Will Wheaton was going to be here, I was like, I have to make something for him because I just want to give him a gift. I want to give him something to show that, that, you know, I'm tuned in to what he's doing, that I'm really loving what he's doing. And, you know, as sort of a, a thank you for all that he has done, um, especially because 
much more over the last couple of years. He's been talking a lot about mental health issues and how he's dealing with his own and how to get help and and how you realize that you need help. And he's brought a lot of visibility um, and sort of acceptance to mental health issues. And, and that's a big deal for me too. It's one of the reasons that I love Jenny Lawson so much um, and has become another reason that I love Will Wheaton so much. So anyway, to thank him for all of his things, I wanted to make him something. And recently, if you follow him on Instagram, and I don't know how many of you do because I don't know if y'all are geeks like me, you might be your own kind of geek, <laughs> but um, he does these bedhead pictures um, every morning and you know it's basically a picture of him holding a coffee mug with whatever his hair looked like when he woke up that morning. And so <clears throat> he does these bedhead pictures. Well he did sort of a fancy one to, to help advertise and promote the uh, the after show that he's doing for Picard. It's called Ready Room. And so he did this special headshot and everything. And when he posted it to his Instagram, he got this comment from someone in Russia who was having a little bit of trouble with her English, but they were like super excited to leave a comment for him and they were so happy for him. And, you know, it said stuff like, like, uh, you know, it's such an interesting idea to take pictures with your mug. How different. And then um, what did it say? It said something like, I really should have, I really should just put the post up here for you. But anyway, it said something like, uh, and you're an actor and not, and by far not the worst. Um, you know, and it was just kind of this interesting, quirky little way for somebody to say that they appreciated Will Wheaton. And so he was so touched by it and so amused by it that he posted it to his Facebook. And, you know, there was this huge outpouring of, of comments on, on the post and everything. And somebody at somewhere in the post said, you should, you tr you should turn that into a, a mug. And, uh, well, I can't make a mug, but I damn sure can make a cross stitch. So I designed a cross stitch pattern. I've actually designed something that's a little bit more elaborate than what I'm gonna show you. Um, and I'm hoping in the next few weeks to actually, maybe not next few weeks, hopefully in the next week or two, um, to actually get that set up because I want to put it in my Etsy shop. Um, I wanna, I need to stitch a, a sample, a model of it. And I wanna put it in my Etsy shop. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because um, I do want to set it up as a, a charity pattern. Um, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to be able to do quite the full, you know, all of the proceeds go to charity, but I will um, uh, do a significant portion towards um, a charity that I know Will Wheaton is really into. He likes, um, or he always has worked with the Pasadena Humane Society um, doing various kinds of charity. So I'm going to set it up as a pattern, um, a chart that's available to purchase in PDF on my Etsy shop. And I'll be donating proceeds from that to uh, some of the proceeds from that to the Pasadena Humane Society. Um, so anyway, uh, so what I did was I took that that comment he received and his amusement over that comment and I turned it into a cross stitch pattern. And then I turned that cross-stitch pattern into a coaster. <laughs> so I condensed, you know, what the gentleman said. He said a lot of stuff, um, but really what came out of that was by far not the worst. Um, that seemed to be the thing that really kind of tickled Will Wheaton. So um, I have done this pattern. Like I said, I've made it a little bit more elaborate than one that I'm going to put in my Etsy shop. This is what would fit in this coaster. So, and this fabric... I don't know if you can tell, you may not, you may not remember, but this fabric that I've stitched it on is one of those pieces of fabric that I dyed myself the ice, with the ice dyeing method. So this is hand dyed fabric, hand stitched by me, it's got my little tiny signature in the corner there, um, turned into a coaster to give to Will Wheaton tomorrow. So I'm super excited um, and it's going to be super awkward too because it's like he's not doing any autograph sessions and usually the autograph sessions are when you can actually go and, and at least have like a little, you know, minute or two chat with, with whoever, um, but he's not doing those. He's going to do a QA and a and he's going to do a couple of photo ops um, and so um, a, friend of my, a friend of mine and I have gone in halfsies to get a photo op with him and LeVar Burton and Marina Sirtis from The Next Generation. And so I'm kind of hoping that I'm going to be able to be like, I made you a thing and just like hand it to him as we get into the photo thing. So um, we'll see how that goes. Um, I look forward to letting you all know. Um, hopefully it won't be tragic. <laughs>
Um, he's a super nice guy, so I don't expect him to just like throw it on the floor and be like, screw you, don't make me things. Um, but it could be super awkward and uh, it, it, you know, I'm gonna try not to, I'm gonna assume that it can't be disappointing because my whole goal is just to give him a thing that I made for him. So however that turns out, it'll be great. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> this is a thing that I made for Will Wheaton. And if this is going in a larger floss tube, then, um, you know, then I'll probably discuss what happened. <laughs> um, even if this doesn't go into a larger floss tube, um, the next time I make a floss tube, which hopefully will be this weekend, but I'm not 100% positive. Like I said, I'm going to be at, at Galaxy Con all day tomorrow. Um, and then Saturday uh, or Sunday, I've got a bunch of Etsy listings to get set up for you. So, um, <clears throat> which probably may not include this pattern maybe we'll see I still have to I have set it up on one program and then realized that I need to use a different program so, <laughs> so I have to redo it on a whole other program but um but it's pretty much a finished design I mean I'm, I'm pretty proud of it I think um no I am pretty proud of it I don't think I'm proud of it I'm definitely proud of it um but yeah so Anyway, I have a lot of stuff to do on Sunday, um, so hopefully I'll get a floss tube filmed on Sunday, um, and if I don't, then I will get it up as soon as I can, but I definitely, I wanted to let you all see this, because I'm super, super proud of it. It's my first finish, actual finish, of 2020, and it is my first FFO of 2020, um, so yeah. That's pretty awesome. And it could possibly, probably be my very first official finish chart that I can distribute. So super, super excited. Anyway, so there is that. I hope you're all having a great evening, day, night. Uh, those are the same things, aren't they? Morning, middle of the night, middle of the day, lunchtime, whatever part of the day. <laughs> I hope you're having a great one. And uh, I will see you soon, Stitchy friends. Bye. Hi, Stitchy people. Uh, this is Jesse again. So I just wanted to check back in with you um, after GalaxyCon because I'm super excited. So uh, I'm going to apologize also for the glare on my glasses. I can't, the sun is so bright today and I can't quite, <laughs> I can't quite get in a position where it's not going to be glared on my glasses without looking like I'm doing something weird. So anyway, apologies for that, uh, but this will be quick anyway because um, I don't have time for a full floss tube this week. I'll try to get that in next week. We'll see how that goes. Um, so ultimately, I think this video is going to be a floss tube eight and a half. <laughs> but um, so beginning of this video, you saw me talk about that piece that I had done for Will Wheaton, um, and I'm going to call it um, by far not the worst. Um, so I actually did get a chance to meet Will Wheaton and talk to him yesterday and give him that uh, that coaster that I had made for him and he was so thrilled. It was one of the most amazing experiences in my life. I got to tell him how much he meant to me and he was just over the moon about the gift that I had for him um, to the point that he immediately took a picture of it and posted it to Instagram which was like super awesome. <laughs> So I'm kind of like Instagram famous on Will Wheaton's page, uh, assuming you knew where that that um, that coaster came from. But he was over the moon about it, and um, more than that, he further explained that um, the whole the whole reason that he loved that comment so much was that in this uh, in the original commenter's native language, which Will believed was either Estonian or Russian, uh, something Eastern European. In that person's native language there is this phrase that means the best of the most wonderful version of that can exist um, but it doesn't translate directly into English the best translation that you can get is what amounts to by far not the worst so when he got that comment from that person and understood the background of that language and everything uh, he knew that that person was telling him that uh, that they believed that will was the best thing ever that he was a fantastic actor and the best actor ever um, and so he was extremely touched that i gave him that piece that reminded him of that he said he had a special place already picked out for it in his office which is just I can't even tell you guys it's just so heartwarming and I also got a chance to tell Will just how much he has meant to me especially his his journey over the last um, five or ten years where he's really started to be open about his depression and his anxiety and how he's dealing with those things and how he's dealing with um, 
trauma that he suffered in his younger days, especially those days when he was just becoming an actor um, and, you know, was on the set with um, the Next Generation folks, but didn't have, he didn't have that support at home. Um, but he did get a lot of familial support from the folks on the cast of uh, Star Trek The Next Generation. And, you know, I got to go to his Q&A and he talked a lot about that and being the person that he wished he'd had when he was a kid. Um, and when I talked to him directly, you know, I told him that he was one of the reasons I was able to get the help that I needed for my mental health. And, um, you know, he was so appreciative of that. And he took the time to say, I want to tell you something that I wish somebody had told me 25 years ago. Um, and it was very sweet. And it, it's the simplest, but also probably some of the most helpful words that, that anybody could give another person. So I'm going to give them to you um, to pass that forward. Um, and what he said is, you know, if you have, if you have a pet, uh, I have four cats. I'm assuming some of you have dogs and cats and whatever kind of fur babies, you know, that you have. But think about how you talk to your pet. Think about how you talk to your fur babies. Do you berate them? Do you say nasty things to them? Do you call them nasty names? No, you don't usually do that. You call them sweet and adorable and wonderful and amazing and you talk to them in that loving, overflowing kind of, you're the best thing that ever happened to me kind of voice. And he said, think about that and think about how you talk to yourself. Talk to yourself the way you would talk to your pets, to your cats, to your dogs, to your favorite fur babies. Talk to yourself the way you talk to them because you deserve that love and attention as much as they do. Um, and we're oftentimes far more hard on ourselves than we should be, that we need to be. Um, and so when you're thinking about those things that you're saying to yourself, think about them in the context of how you would say things to your pets or even to, to other people that you love. How would you talk to other people that you love and use that voice on yourself? So fantastic advice. Um, yeah, I'm getting, a little, <laughs> I'm getting a little, a little, uh, I have the feels, um, but he's such an amazing person. And every time I meet him, I am just even more convinced of, of how amazing a human being he is. So I was very fortunate to be able to, uh, to make that for him and to give it to him. And I even mentioned to him the idea I had about making it um, a printable PDF on uh, on Etsy to sell in my shop and donating part of those proceeds to the Pasadena Humane Society and he loved that idea. So I am absolutely going forward with that. I just need to get that finalized, get it into the right program and into a professional format and that will be going up in my shop very, very soon. I'm thinking, I'm not sure about the price point. I'll, I'll figure that out and I'll give you all those updates uh, sometime soon. I also have I don't know if you can see over my shoulder here. I'm scooting around. Okay, so uh, right about there, there are some things sitting here that maybe you haven't seen before. Um, these are some, actually these right here specifically, um, are some stitch counters, uh, gauge counters to tell you what size your fabric is. And then next to that, that's a long dong. I did it. <laughs> if you watch Rolodex stitches, you know, you, you know the joke there. Long dog samplers pattern. And I also have uh, some dinky dies, <laughs> brain fart, dinky dies patterns. And right in front, you probably can't tell, um, but these are some Plum Street samplers, animal stacks patterns. So these babies are brand new in my hot little hands and will be brand new in the Etsy store very, 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 very soon. So if you have been looking at those animal stacks uh, patterns like I have been, and that's like the turkey or it's like a gobbler, gobbler gob and fox few and um, rat, uh, what is it? Um, rack stack and uh, just all the different animals, cow pile, um, there's, there's, like little stacks of different kinds of animals um, and there's a whole set and there's a new one I think it's Rue Crew is the brand new one coming out in Nashville. I will have those as soon as I can possibly get them. But yeah, so those are some of the, the patterns that I have been looking at getting for myself. And so now that I have my my 
business officialized and the ability to buy some wholesale things, I'm going to start stocking my shop with patterns that I love that I hope you will love too. Um, and like I said, that includes some long dog samplers, some dinky dyes, um, and ink circles designs as well, and also those Plum Street samplers. So I'm super excited to bring those to you as well. There'll be some floss. Um, I'm going to start a floss club, a monthly floss club. Stay tuned for details for that as well. So anyway, this was just a really quick little thing. Um, like I said, I don't have time to do the full floss tube. Um, hopefully next week, so it won't be too far into March because I do want to do a February recap. I have a February, I have a February FFO, but I also have a February finish on one of my SALs. Super excited. It is the first time I've been caught up on any of my SALs so far this year. So super, super excited. I'll show that to you. I'll show you whatever other progress I have. I think the, I think the, the one SAL that I finished for the month is the only thing I've really worked on since our last floss tube. So most of what you see will be um, will be whatever I've done in March uh, when I actually get hit, get to the floss tube. I've also got some uh, great stuff from Kathy at Dying for Cross Stitch and um, and some other stuff from Dinky Dice that I want to share with you. So have some super exciting fun stuff but I did want to just give you this little this quick little thing to give you an idea of what I've been doing um, like I said I'm so excited to have gotten to talk to Will Wheaton um, and have it reaffirmed that he's such an awesome person he's doing some amazing things going forward but one of the biggest things for me is the same with Jenny Lawson that he has brought so much visibility to mental health and to help normalize getting help uh, when you need help um, because it shouldn't be a stigma. It shouldn't be an issue. We should be able to discuss these things with each other just like we discuss the weather. You know, if somebody says, oh, I saw my therapist the other day, it shouldn't be a shock. It shouldn't be a thing. It should be just like I went to the doctor to get my annual checkup. You know, it should be a normal thing because all of us are worth a little bit of care when it comes to mental health. So anyway, off my soapbox. But thank you all so much for watching and I will see you soon on floss tube number nine. Bye, have a great one.